Hey gang, welcome back. Okay, so you may recall back when we talked about SN2, SN1, E2, E1, there was a lot of, you know, com the reactions competing with each other and we had to figure out, you know, which one was happening given a situation. Well, that's kind of only limited to when you learn about those reactions in the beginning. Once you kind of, you know, are introduced to them, you have, you kind of go through that little uh, tunnel of, uh, you know, guessing, or not guessing, but determining which reaction is occurring, we don't really test you on that anymore, or no teachers will. You kind of are introduced to various reactions, and then you're kind of told, oh, this is an E1 pathway, or oh, this is an SN2 pathway, E2, E1 pathway, okay? So, the reaction we're going to do in this video is called a dehydration reaction, and it's an E1 mechanism. So, let me just throw up an example reaction, and then we will go through the mechanism, then we'll do some examples, and I want to show you one mechanism in particular. Okay, so here's how this reaction works. Let me make that two a little nicer for you. So if you have an alcohol, and you subject it to H2SO4, some heat, right, a delta, and a lab technique called reflux, which you don't really have to worry about. If you're interested, go ahead and Google it. Um, what you will actually have occur, the transformation, right, it's an E1 mechanism, you drive off the alcohol and you make an alkene, right, you do a dehydration. So here's kind of like the, uh, what you see in your textbooks boxed, right, this is your reaction. Okay, so let's draw the mechanism, right, that gives us a little more insight as to what we're dealing with. So here is the mechanism. So, remember, I've said this a bunch, and I'm sorry if this is annoying, you're like, Joe, we get it. But remember, alcohols, amphoteric. They can both act as an acid and a base. However, we're in the presence of a really strong acid, H2SO4. So he's going to kind of take over the H plus donating show, and he's going to kind of, he's going to protonate this oxygen in the alcohol. So I'm going to draw for you guys the Lewis structure of sulfuric acid. I would highly recommend kind of knowing this off the top of your head. It comes up every once in a while. So, this is the hydrogen, the H, the uh, proton we're going to grab. This OH, right, it's going to take us two electrons, double headed arrow, grab H plus. Then we're going to dump these electrons off onto oxygen. So, if I'm going to draw the result of that electron flow, now I have this oxygen right here, and I'm going to kind of just write him like this. I know I did this in the last video, OH2, and this oxygen has a positive charge, right? Because he took his bond, he took a lone pair and made a bond. His formal charge now is one less than it was before, so he's a positive one charge. And I'm going to keep tabs on this, uh, the conjugate base of sulfuric acid. It is bisulfate, right? Just sulfuric acid with one less hydrogen. Okay, so... I'm going to we're gonna push him off to the wayside. What's our next step? Well, this is a good leaving group. We're obviously in a polar protic environment, right? He's going to just leave, right? Because as a leaving group, H2O, that's water. That's a stable leaving group, right? So remember, now that we've formed, once that group leaves, we've formed a carbocation, right? So now you kind of, I hinted at this in the last video, this mechanism is subject to carbocation rearrangements, both hydride and methyl, right? Okay, so what's the last step? What's, what's the payoff? Okay, so this heat. So actually, when you crank up the temperature, elimination products are favored. I know I said E1 is kind of, there was kind of like a minor product, but if you increase the temperature, you can kind of favor the elimination product in an E1 mechanism, as opposed to SN2. So here's what happens. This conjugate base comes back, and what he's going to do is he's going to steal a hydrogen to make the more substituted double bond. Here we have a symmetrical situation, so it doesn't matter. So this sulfuric acid is ca it's uh, acid it's catalyzed. It's a ca it's an acid catalysis. So remember, catalysts aren't consumed in your reaction. So, we start out with it, this is going to grab H+, this electron pair is going to swing over and make a double bond. We don't have to do any type of, 
electron bouncing because we're not going to break any octet rule. So now you can see we end up with our elimination product. And like I said, sorry for the stuttering, but we started out with sulfuric acid. And since this reaction is catalyzed by acid, catalyzed by sulfuric acid, we start out with it and we recover it at the end. So just a quick recap, remember, alcohols, amphoteric, in the presence of a strong acid, they can definitely act like a base. We pick up H+, we protonate this OH to H2O, a good leaving group. It, go, it go, actually does what it's supposed to do and leaves. And once we form this carbocation, we check for shifts. No shifts here, right, because this is secondary. We don't want to shift to a primary carbocation or a, dif a different primary carbocation. Then we pick up, or we bring back our conjugate base from sulfuric acid. We pick up a hydrogen, and then we form our double bond through elimination, and we have our product and our uh, acid catalyst back. So let me erase this. I want to go over just two complete the reaction problems with you guys, and then I want to go through a mechanism. Might be a little overwhelming at first, but I have it on the worksheet. I'd be shocked if it wasn't on uh, a test, a final. It was on one of my finals. It's kind of like a classic problem. But uh, let me erase this, and then we'll get to it. Okay, gang. So let's tackle these two uh, complete the reaction problems. So here's how I usually go about these completing the reaction problems when I know that there might be a shift afoot. And I think I did this kind of in the last video a little bit. I like to first make the immediate carbocation intermediate that I'm, sorry, that rhymed. That was weird. That you're going to form, right? So first of all, let's actually kind of prove to ourselves that we are kind of dealing with a dehydration reaction. So you can see we have this secondary carbocation, good for forming a carb, or sorry, secondary substrate, which could form a good carbocation attached to an alcohol, right? Then we have H2SO4, reflux and heat. We think to ourselves, ah, classic dehydration reaction, going to give us some type of elimination product through an E1 mechanism. Okay, so remember, we're going to protonate this Alco or this alcohol right here, right, giving him another hydrogen and a plus formal charge. That makes him a good leaving group. And remember, this water will just leave, forming a carbocation right here on our dot carbon. So let me draw that for you guys over here. Two methyl groups here, and we have our, oh, whoops, I'm going to actually draw you guys the carbocation. So we have a plus charge in the secondary position where the dot carbon is over here. So ask, stop, ask yourself, can we make this a better carbocation? I hope the first thing you did was look down and say, well, why would we shift it to a secondary carbocation? That makes no sense. But ding, 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 you can see we're next door to two methyl groups. And we could easily do a methyl shift, right? Move one of these CH3s to this carbon right here and moving this positive charge up to the top carbon in the ring, and that would make it go from a secondary carbocation to a tertiary, right? So then kind of your carbocation intermediate, if I just, actually just redraw it over here, right? We still, we have a CH3 here, a CH3 there, and a plus charge right there, okay? That's kind of how I go about it. Now, Let's think about the actual mechanism we're dealing with. Remember, it's an elimination mechanism. So really, we have two options. Do we attack, or sorry, do we eliminate and make our double bond going this way? Or do we actually make it go to the right? And the answer is, make the more substituted double bond. So you can see that our final product, and I'll draw it in blue, would be this. Methyl group methyl group, and the more substituted double bond would go right there. Hopefully that made sense. So the trick here was that there was a methyl shift. <clears throat> okay, now let's look at our structure down here. Again, go through the same process. We're going to protonate this OH to water, and he's going to leave, forming a carbocation at this position right here that I've dotted. So let's draw the result, the, the immediate carbocation formed right there. Can we make it better? Look to the left. Nope, that's a primary position that wouldn't make it better. Baha, to the right. Yes, 
That is a tertiary position, and we see there is a hydrogen, a hydride we can easily shift to make this secondary carbocation move to being a tertiary one. So let's do that. Draw my arrow, moving both the, the electrons in the bond and the hydrogen to this position. So, if I'm just gonna kind of erase this and redraw my inner, my new carbocation, right now, it's right there. Hopefully that wasn't too fast. Okay, so remember, we're making a double bond here, the more substituted double bond. So, hopefully it's easy to see that we're gonna make our double bond going this way, right? Because we would have a tertiary carbon bonded to a secondary carbon versus a tertiary bond double bonded to a primary. So the double bond goes right there. Okay, gang. So I have plenty of these for you on the worksheet. I think they're the few of the last problems, but I want to show you guys one more thing. It's a mechanism. So I'm going to erase this, and then we're going to kind of, kind of step through the mechanism together. Okay, gang. Last problem. Give me a little more attention, and then we'll be done. All right, so this problem is actually on your worksheet. And while the point of Joe Chem isn't for me to, you know, kind of be quizzing you guys, because I'm not your teacher, I'm here to help. But I think there's some value in going over some problems together and having you redo them on the worksheet, because they most likely will show up on tests. There are some problems that usually are just test material, and I think this is one of them. Okay, so if you're looking at this and saying, what just happened? Honestly, when I took OCHEM 1, I would, say this, I would say the same thing. So, let's kind of digest this, right? So we can see we went from a five-membered ring to a six-membered ring, right? That's kind of crazy. We've never seen anything like that before. So, it's really easy, just like many things in OCHEM, to be like, well, I'm screwed, I'm done, going to leave it blank, no points. I want to kind of get you guys, well, hopefully that's not your mindset, but this will not be the first time, definitely will not be the, the last time, this will be the first time, that you've seen something and you're like, I have no idea what's going on. And here's my advice. That's completely okay. The trick is to not freak out and to just kind of start off doing what you know how to do. I promise you, no teacher would give you a problem where you have no clue what's going on. It's usually a problem kind of disguised. You know what's going on, but there's a little trick. And the trick is minor compared to the big concept at work. So let's actually nail down what that concept is, the big one at work. So you can see we have an alcohol, right? And we can see we have H2SO4, reflux, and heat. We know how to work with that. So let's just start off doing what we know to do, and I guarantee there's going to be a moment where we're like, that's the trick. Okay. So remember, alcohols being having the ability to act as a base and an acid, they're going to be protonated by the strong so the strong acid in sulfuric acid, right? So let's go ahead and do that acid base reaction, right? Let's grab this H plus, this proton, dump the electrons off to oxygen. I'm just going to draw a line right here to make sure we don't get mixed up. Okay. The problem would be, here's a reaction, explain how it works. Okay, so we protonated our oxygen. Phenomenal. Now we have OH2 giving oxygen a positive charge. And let's continue to keep doing what we know to do. This is a good leaving group. This is the point in the mechanism where you would know to say, okay, water, you're packing your bags, you're out of here. I'm going to have you remove this charge from my arrow. I'm going to have you leave. Okay? So, next step, like we've done in all of our other E1 mechanisms, or dehydration reaction mechanisms, we form a carbocation. Here is the pivotal point. We have a five-membered ring. We can see that we obviously had to do something to go to a six-membered ring. Why don't we just shift a bond to kind of include this carbon in the ring, right? Because let's do a little numbering. We have one, 
two, three, four, five carbons. If I were to do something like this, we renumber a little bit. What if I kind of gave this carbon a one, this carbon a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six? Well, that would definitely give us a six-membered ring if I can work to include him. So, why don't I do it? There is a driving force here. Going from a five-membered ring to a six-membered ring is better for the structure's energy as far as ring strain. No ring strain in cyclohexane. So how about this? This might be a little crazy, but if I move this bond, then I'll have a bond between carbons one and carbon six, and that would make us a six-membered ring, right? So let me do this, okay? And then I'll redraw a ring and we'll number it. So I'm gonna draw the result down here. Let me draw a six-membered ring. And I'll go around and I'll just number them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And we'll see if we can make this work. On carbon number 1, I have a methyl group, right? You see just straight off this dot carbon, I have just a CH3. So I filled that in. Nothing on carbon 2, nothing on carbon 3, nothing on 4, nothing on 5, nothing on 6. You can see that that worked, right? However, we still have to find out where this charge went, right? We had a, a carbocation and we moved a bond, so somebody lost a bond, right? And actually, six was an asterisk carbon. So, can you see that one gained a bond, six did not lose a bond, but two did lose a bond, right? So now he is the bearer of a positive charge. And you can see we're looking pretty close to what our product is, right? Now that we actually have a six-membered ring, let's just do an elimination reaction, and we're done. So who's going to come back but the conjugate base of sulfuric acid? Draw him real quick. And remember, it doesn't matter if we're eliminating on the right carbon or the left carbon, right? Because there's symmetry here. If I look next door to where my carbocation is, and sorry these arrows are going to be a little wonky, but if I grab that hydrogen next door and swung these electrons down for elimination, then we finally have our product, right? And it does, like I said, it doesn't matter that the double bond is going to the left, because I can easily just flip this guy over like a pancake, and that's our final product. So I want you guys to reproduce, reproduce this on the worksheet on your own. You should be comfortable doing this. You should be able to go from a four-membered ring to a five-membered ring, and from this five-membered ring to a six-membered ring. Okay, so we have two more videos in this series. We're going to tackle ethers and epoxides, and then we're done.